Hi, my name is Manuel Alikhani. I am Dean and Professor at CITOR Academy, and I'd like to welcome you back to the CITOR channel. Um, today, we're going to present an interesting case as part of the Back to the Clinic series. If you remember from the TED Talk video, uh, which introduced a concept for orthopedic treatment called NIM. If uh, you have not seen that video, please follow the link in CITOR channel and that give you an introduction what is NIM standing for neuroimmunomechanotherapy that is a new therapeutic principles for correction of skeletal deformities uh, today i'm not going to talk about the NIM but i'm going to talk about the significant component of the NIM that is cortical drifting cortical drifting is when you are stimulating the cortical bone uh, to drift in the directions of your movement it is a significant tool as a biological target for correction of the skeletal deformities. Traditionally, we were focusing mostly on the sutures and the condyles to address the skeletal deformities. However, science shows that uh, is actually the stimulating of the bone remodeling machinery, especially at the level of a cortical bone, is as significant as a suture and condyle as a biological target. Let's look at a case. A patient comes to you with a complaint of underbite. When you're doing a clinical exam, you notice that the patient can push his lower jaw back to the edge to edge a little bit. Centrals are starting to touch. Uh, molars and canines at these positions are class three, and uh, there is significant posterior open bite. When we do the panorex uh, analysis, nothing significant observed. The teeth are normally developing. And the self analysis, however, shows that a patient has significant maxillary deficiency. When we ask the patients to be relaxed, he would shift the mandible forward and the posterior teeth come together. And this is a very common scenario in the skeletal class 3 patient where due to the interference in the front, they usually shift forward and they uh, fit in a more comfortable positions when the posterior teeth can touch, but the anterior teeth will go to the uh, significant anterior crossbite. So how we can provide a treatment for this patient? During the conversation with the parent of this young patient, we offer different options. One option was, let's do surgery, but it has its own side effects. We went through the pro and con of that, and the patient were not very happy with that. Uh, the second option was compensatory treatment do some extraction and parents also again were not very interesting on that options um, uh, option of uh, a skeletal anchorage is also were, were discussed that requires insertion and removal of the plate and parents didn't want any surgical intervention in this patient so we talk about the NIM therapy and parents were okay with that it's very conservative no surgery no extraction and they wanted to give the NIM a chance if you remember from the NIM uh, discussion, it has a neurological component where we are addressing the CNS part, uh, immunological part that we are uh, stimulating the osteoclast and osteoplast and the mechanotherapy part. Uh, in this discussion today, we just want to focus on the cortical drifting part or that is part of the immunological reaction of the patients. However, in this patient, we went through the whole uh, steps of the NIM treatment. We started with the correcting the central nervous system using uh, a specific bite block therapy, uh, MA bite block therapy. Uh, and then uh, we addressed the sutures at the same time, uh, enhanced the answer to the face mask and expansion through the specific procedures to increase the number of the osteoclasts in the sutural and enhance our uh, sutural response and then as part of the uh, stimulation of cortical drifting we use a one couple system uh, a mechanics that can uh, stimulate the bone to migrate forward and downward in the anterior part of the maxilla after we uh, address all this we uh, applied um, a regular orthodontics treatment through the free object design sectional mechanics and semi-restricted design full setup that we will talk about all this component differently. As you can see, correction of complex ortho orthopedic treatments is not just one component, it has different components, and each one of them needs to be addressed properly. Let's look at the result of this treatment. As you can see, without doing any surgical exposure, we were able to achieve a class one molar and canine 
we were able to establish a proper overbite and overjet. And when we're looking at the CEF analysis after our treatment, we noticed that the axillary maxillary advancement has occurred and the um, patient demonstrated the favorite growth after that. You can see a vertical growth of the mandible and all these things together uh, favored the correction of a skeletal class three relationship without involving any surgery. From this case, we learned that the nymtropy can be very effective for correction of skeletal deformities. And during the nymtropy, uh, you should focus not only targeting the sutures or condyles, depends on the skeletal deformities that you have, but also take advantage as important from the cortical drifting phenomenon uh, to stimulate the bone remodeling and the whole maxilla or part of the maxilla or mandible or part of the mandible. I hope you enjoy the case presentation today and it's just stimulate your mind and possibilities of correction of skeletal deformities. Uh, if you notice that uh, there's a lot of things that you like to have asked questions, of course, you, please write your comments and I will try to answer. But be patient and I will cover each one of these uh, subjects separately in the future videos. Um, thank you again for listening to another uh, series of Citrus channel. If you didn't have the chance to subscribe to our channel, please go ahead and subscribe. And please don't forget to press the like button. Thank you.